Yellowstone supervolcano fieldwork begins in the Norris Geyser Basin and other areas, and they will be getting to the new thermal hotspot that has been discovered. This is the latest Caldera Chronicles. They come out every week. This was dated May 27th. Tis the season for fieldwork in Yellowstone. Yellowstone supervolcano Caldera Chronicles, weekly column written by the scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution is from Mike Poland. He's the geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey and scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Supervolcano, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Now, we know that they could not go for field work because you won't be able, you won't believe what, how much snow they had to dig through to put in the new instruments. They had to dig in four feet of snow. And this is May. You can understand it's very high up. They have a lot of snowfall. And this month of May marks the start of many field studies for scientists affiliated with the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO. By that time, the roads in Yellowstone National Park are open, and during most years, snow levels are low enough that scientists can access monitoring sites to do maintenance and installation work. This May was no different, and several YVO scientists spent last week in the park focused on a variety of tasks, including work on temperature sensors and GPS stations. And we saw that a, about a week ago, they did replace, they did put in a thermal monitor in um, Norris Geyser Basin, and we do have now temperature monitoring of the steamboat geyser because they didn't have one up to now. Steamboat started erupting last March, and they didn't have a thermal monitor for that. They would only uh, test uh, the temperature of the water that was going to tantal the stream. Now, Norris Geyser Basin, YVO, operates a nine-station temperature network. Taking continuous temperature readings of hot springs and geysers is nothing new. Yellowstone National Park scientists have been doing that sort of work for decades, but the Norris network is unique because it is telemetered. That is, the data are downloaded every day via radio and made available online for public viewing. The Norris temperature network stations each have a data logger, radio antenna, and thermometer, all powered by a small lithium-iron battery pack that can last up to two years. To ensure that stations continue to operate year-round, a maintenance trip every May focuses on replacing broken equipment that might have failed during the winter and also swapping old batteries for new ones where needed. Most of the stations worked well through the winter. The thermometer at the Tantalus Creek station was clearly broken since for several months it had been registering temperatures below zero Celsius in flowing liquid water, so that wasn't right. The sensor was replaced and is now functioning normally. The only station that was completely offline through the winter was, unfortunately, the one monitoring steamboat geyser. Well, we know that. Happily, however, upgrades to the equipment there revived the sensor and is now operating once again providing temperature data showing water eruptions of the geyser. Hopefully, strong torrents of water issuing from the geyser during future eruptions won't sweep the thermometer away. All Norris temperature data are available at the YVO monitoring map. Zoom into the Norris area and select one of the thermometer symbols for data plots or from the individual station pages access accessible for, from the Norris Temperature Network homepage. In addition to the year-round continuous GPS network that operates in Yellowstone, YVO maintains a network of 16 semi-permanent GPS stations around the park. These GPS sites are deployed in May and recovered in October and are located in areas that lack continuous sites. The semi-permanent stations are not telemetered, so data are not available in real time. Only in October, when the equipment is removed before the onset of winter, can the data be analyzed? Data from these sites can be viewed on the USGS Yellowstone semi-permanent GPS network page. Last week, 15 of the 16 semi-permanent GPS sites were deployed. An equipment malfunction prevented installation of the last site, but that will be done at a later time. 
In addition to field work, YVO scientists took time out to interact with local community. On May 16, several USGS and National Park Service geoscientists gave a public presentation and answered questions in Gardiner, Montana. A few days later, on May 22, USGS and National Park Service combined with the University of Utah. We know that the University of Utah is responsible for monitoring, monitoring the seismic activity of the supervolcano. So they combined with the University of Utah for a presentation with a questions and answers session. Hopefully these sorts of events will turn into annual traditions in the years to come. Now that the snows are melting and the temperatures are warming, albeit slowly, it snowed during most of the field days last week. More field work is on the horizon. This will include more equipment maintenance, geologic mapping, geochemical sampling, and many other, uh, many other studies. So stay tuned for more results from another exciting field session, field season in Yellowstone. Now the uh, geologists that were digging, dug through the four feet of snow to position the GPS, scientists Rebecca Kramer and Dan Zurizen installed a solar panel and GPS antenna, Green Square, at a semi-permanent GPS station in the southern part of Yellowstone National Park. The work first required digging through four feet of snow, USGS photo by Brian Myers, May 21st, just a week ago, 2019. Now I'll leave you the link for the uh, monitor Yellowstone monitoring data for Steamboat Geyser. Steamboat temperature monitoring equipment is currently non-operational. New instrumentation will be installed spring 2019, it says on the top. Now we have the daily temperature graph. It has nothing in there. Steamboat temperature, weekly temperature graph is from May 23rd to 26th. We see that it is really going up, really going up. It started on uh, May 23rd at zero degrees centigrade. And it's uh, on May 26th, it went up to a boiling 50 degrees centigrade. I mean, that's a big difference. 100 is boiling, okay? Monthly temperature graph, well, they put it online around uh, the 20th, from, under, from what it looks like, the 20th of May, about a week or ten, uh, nine days ago. And the monthly temperature graph says steamboat temperature was at 40, it dropped down to zero, and then it's working up again as we said, to 50. So it's really, uh, is it maybe it's getting ready for, um, maybe it goes down after the eruption and, and as, the, as the temperature builds up, that means it's getting ready for eruption. It's get, it erupts just about every week now. So I'll leave a link below for you for that as well. And in the Norris Geyser Basin, I just remembered, it's not just the steamboat geyser that started erupting, it's also the ledge geyser. The ledge geyser is also in the Norris Geyser Basin. We know that Norris Geyser, uh, the, uh, the caldera is deforming. There's a lot of deformation. And we have a rise in Norris Geyser Basin, whereas the, uh, the caldera area is uh, subsiding for some reason. So there's a lot of deformities there. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition, 
and the community around our church. Thank you.